An estimated 40% of Africans today rely on the use of digital channels for banking transactions. With the easy access to technology, coupled with an increase of fintech businesses, financial services find themselves having to change rapidly to keep up with the growing digital population. Javier Hermida, head of digital for Africa at Temenos, joined CNBC Africa to delve into the acceleration of digital transformation. Now, Javier, as a layperson who's not in the tech sector, I know that I have seen the word Temenos somewhere and I've, I've seen the logo. So I think it's one of those brands that you know you've seen everywhere. And when you see it, you know that you, the brand is doing important work, but you don't know quite what the brand does. So I just want you to tell me about Temenos. Uh, tell me about the brand. Uh, tell me about the work that you do and about the reach. So that's a, it's an interesting point, right? Because I think how you might experience Temenos is as an end user. So Temenos serves around 1.2 billion people globally, which is around a third of the banked population, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we work with banks, right? So we're not in the end user business. The end user ultimately benefits from that. So we really serve about 3,000 organizations across 150 countries. In Africa, we work with about 160 banks across 40 countries. Okay, nice. So you say that you know you you serve over three thousand banks worldwide. Um, I definitely knew that. My money knows you. Um, no, I just want you to tell me, you know, about how customers uh, have experienced banks, the financial industry, and what their expectations are. Because I mean, COVID nineteen has changed a lot of things. We do know that banks have gone more digital. We have seen banks releasing their annual results and seeing, you know, that part of the business really booming the demand for digitization. I just want you to tell me about the, what the, cu the customer currently experiences, their expectations, and also what they actually want from a bank. That's a great question. So, so we always expected this decade to be the, the decade of digital banking, right? And the customers have been pushed forward by what's happening outside of banking. If you think of retail brands, you know, the Netflix or Amazons in the hospitality space. And then you look at brands that they kind of really, really understand the customer, really get them. And that set the bar of how customers expect to, to, to view digital and to interact with digital. And along come banks and they think, well, uh, are we then on that level? Are we delivering on that level? And so that was kind of what does the customer expect? The customer expects to be treated such as they're, treating, they're being treated elsewhere for digital, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward to COVID. And that kind of brings the reality that, well, banks really are a little bit behind the Amazons, the Netflix, the Ubers of the world, because there was a high reliance on branch interactivity, right? I'll give you an example. I, one week before the lockdown, I log into my internet banking and I find that I'm unable to transact. I phone the bank and I say, what's going on? They say to me, we don't really know. It's happened to a couple of our customers, but no worries. Grab your ID book, come into the branch and we'll enable digital banking for you again. So okay. there's a high reliance on branch banking just to be digital, right? Yeah. And so COVID's kind of really shifted the, were you ready for this? Or did you still need us in the branch? And what happens when the branch is closed? Mm. Um, I'm interested in the changes and the trends that have been going on in the financial services sector in Africa and also the impact of COVID-19. Just start me off with the changes and the trends that we are seeing. Maybe link uh, worldwide trends to the trends in Africa and how we are closing the gap in the technology lag. So anyone that's used a smartphone across the globe, including across Africa, has experienced other brands in other spaces elevating the digital engagement, right? So that's definitely a trend. Smartphone adoption is a trend, especially in urban centers right across Africa, massive smartphone adoption. So that's also new. It brings new possibilities to how to be able to engage. Then we see new entrance into the space. The regulators are issuing new banking licenses, and this means suddenly you've got more competition which creates a, a further problem for the incumbent banks who were already being squeezed out of margins mm -hmm. by customers that wanted more with less, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you add all this together and then you force a pandemic with branch closures, you have this interesting concoction of suddenly we need to open up the lid and really kind of fast track what we're doing around places like digital, things like cloud banking and so forth. What are some of the tailwinds and the headwinds that the financial sector um, 
is experiencing and will experience going forward because of this uh, acceleration of digitization in, in the sector? Yeah, so, so this is a, a new reality of how you need to service the customer, right? The customer, if we were still dragging them to the branch before at their inconvenience, we're now dragging them into the branch at their inconvenience and potentially what they view as risk, right? So they're not interested for that. So, so how do we make sure we engage digitally to be able to prevent that and to be able to still serve them despite that? I'll give you an example of a customer of ours here in South Africa, a micro lender, and they work with about a million customers at the moment through a network of branches. Mm. And they were about to go live with a system to allow them to improve the engagement in branch, to do applications much quicker, and to get people in and out much quicker to issue them micro loans. Mm. And then the pandemic hit. And so that kind of resized, well, they're not going to come into the branch, the branch is closed. So on the fly, they had to redesign this. And then they went live with a very interesting digital adaptation of this that effectively meant a customer representative could phone a customer, explain to them in layman's terms, this is a loan, this is a micro loan, this is the term, this is what you get, this is a repayment terms. Mm -hmm. And then they could allow them to confirm the acceptance of the loan on a feature phone, on a USSD, very simple command to send, I approve, these are the terms, I'm happy with that, right? So, yeah. so banks very quickly pivoted around how do we adopt some of this technology to do that? Mm. In the US, we have a customer on the East Coast that faced the same situation, right? So the regulator said one day, okay, we need to hold out, there's no money in the economy, the economy is stopping moving, we need to push funds and relief funds down the economy. So they came up with the CARES Act, and the CARES Act was $350 billion they needed to wash down the banking system to protect the jobs and the SMEs. They called it the Paycheck Protection Program, right? Mm. So on a Friday, this gets announced. On a Monday, our customer phones us up and says, guys, this is coming. We don't exactly know how it sits, but we need to allow our SME customers to apply digitally for these loans. They were going to be forgivable loans, right? Mm -hmm. so, so American mm -hmm. markets are here. We're going to print some money. We're going to hold everything out. And they had to react to this. On the Tuesday, we started working with them. They went live on the Friday. So on the Friday, they had put together an electronic means, a digital means for customers to apply for these loans. And within two weeks, they had taken 6,500 loan applications and secured $1.4 billion in forgivable loans for these SME customers. So that's the power of taking digital with agility, pivoting around a pandemic, a challenge, an opportunity, and delivering to the market. Now, we have seen uh, businesses that are not in the financial services sector coming out and actually offering financial services, competing with banks. How are banks uh, going to compete um, you know, with, this new, uh, with this new competition? And so they've got a real challenge, right? So, so banks are formed on centuries-old thinking of a bank revolves around a branch. That's where banking comes from, right? It's not made around the age of the internet, right? So all that infrastructure that was built, what is a bank today, has been an adaptation of branch first. Today we speak of brands such as Netflix and Amazon. They are digital first, mobile first. And there's a massive shift that needs to happen to move and repackage the legacy of all that software and hardware and infrastructure to be able to be lean. So to your point, you see new market entrants that identify a niche opportunity are able to deliver this on a very, very, very tightly packaged cloud delivery yes. offering. They go live really quickly. They've got a very interesting offering because it's customer design mm. above all. It's all about how does a customer experience that. It's very appealing for the customer. And so suddenly banks see themselves not competing against mm. the bank down the road, but against these new entrants that suddenly have a very interesting value proposition for banks. But now we're talking about the tech sector and new entrants into the space. Regulations uh, behind that, how, how's that going? Well, so regulations are a big thing in financial services and that's mm -hmm. really been holding the banking sector up because you can't just get any random person issuing loans as a credit, especially in South Africa, there's mm -hmm. a very good framework around credit regulation and so forth. Less so perhaps north of the border, mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's other things at play there. But, but, but to, to your point, and that's a challenge for new, for new market entrants, is you've got to meet the regulation to play along. But the regulation has never moved as fast as it's moving now. Mm -hmm. We've seen that especially north of the border in Africa, where some countries were completely against the notion of cloud banking, the idea that you're putting data on the cloud and it's no longer in country mm -hmm. and data sovereignty, and these issues are suddenly being done away with, mm -hmm. right? Because 
we understand that that's the way we're going to be able to serve a lead infrastructure to be able to take financial services to the previously unincluded. What have you done to support banks during this time of COVID-19 and how are your services benefiting the financial services sector? Yeah, so I spoke about the micro lender, right? And so, and so here's someone that w spotted an opportunity to do away with 200 odd branches as, as, a big, as a big leaning post of their, of mm -hmm. their architecture, of the strategy and said, how can, we, how can we revolve around this and move this to digital, to bring our services to the people rather than drag the people to our service, right? Mm. And, and the example of you know, quickly digitizing a service where the, 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 the call center agent is able to speak to someone on the phone, that's something someone does every day, and accepting on, you don't need a smartphone for this, mm. accepting on their device the terms and conditions to a microloan. This has saved, I mean, people were traveling long distances by taxi just to have that engagement face to face. We hear of cases of 500 Rand loans with 200 Rand uh, fees of just to get there and back. So if you can look at mm -hmm. having to, to do away or re rebuild the economics of that, mm -hmm. customers have never imagined convenience like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, likewise, what we saw with the example in the US where you've got, you've got customers that that needed to access a banking service, yeah. call centers were completely overwhelmed. Mm. You found that, because that was if branches were closed, people were calling up the bank. The mm. call centers were overwhelmed. Banks were trying to move those people to mm. work from home, just like you and I did, right? And they had to find a way of plugging all that infrastructure around. Yeah. It was chaos for a long time, right? Yeah. And when finally they got around, they said, well, are we as digital as we need it to be, right? Mm. So, so these are some of the capabilities we brought to banks. And the case of doing away with a reliance on call center, just as you do away with a reliance mm -hmm. on a physical branch by enabling digital communication yeah. between someone at the bank and yourself. The, the direction going forward, what do banks need to do and how will Temenos fit into that future? So, so with Temenos Infinity, which is our digital banking engagement platform, we look to kind of re-strategize re with the banks on how do you move forward over the next five to ten years, right? What are the things you need to be able to do and to, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you pan out this to, to the long term? How do you future-proof yourself? And I spoke about the challenge of the customer expectations, the being squeezed for margins, and ultimately there's no, there's no unprofitable customer. There's only an unprofitable way to service a customer. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at the banking model of yesterday that was so branch-based and built around the branch, legacy heavy, the cost and maintenance of that is, is unbearable when you're trying to service a lean model. You get into the large number of population in Africa that's currently unincluded into financial services and you think the only way you're going to do that is with a lean and mean model, right? Yeah. So these are digital first technologies that are cloud delivered. Projects are now measured in a number of weeks, a number of months. It's no longer years. Mm. Lovely. Thank you so much for your time, Javier. Thank you very much for those insights. Thanks for having me.